The next style we're going to discover is Art Deco, which roughly lasted between 1925 to 1940. This would be described as dramatic, opulent, detailed, and luxurious. The Art Deco movement was inspired by Cubism, a style of painting pioneered by Pablo Picasso. Cubism was also heavily influenced by basic 3D geometric shapes like the cone, cylinder, and sphere. Art Deco is less of a specific art style, but more of a collection of styles of that era. It developed in the early 20th century around the period of World War I. It developed through a desire to show excitement for the rapidly developing technology and industries of its time, and the success that followed. It is defined by extravagant opulence with lots of details, sharp angles, and modern-day materials like smooth, rounded plastic and glass. The style of Art Deco movement inspired buildings like the Empire State Building and the Chrysler Building. You can also see the details and ornaments in this classic design for a deck of cards, very much in the Art Deco style. This style heavily influenced the development of varying typography characteristics, like long, stretched, dramatic letter forms with both pointed ends but geometric-inspired curves. The current-day influence of Art Deco can be seen in logo design in a lot of different ways. You could see it through the use of typography as the ultra-stretched letter forms you often see used in modern day. You can also see it in detailed line art, which is popular in logos for coaching, personal development, and hospitality. Because Art Deco is not just one single defined style, it's a collection of styles of that era, you could see different representations of Art Deco throughout typography-based logos. In this example, you have a classic stretch letters, with the center arm of the E being placed lower on the letter form, as well as an underlining characters like the O in this metro example. You also see more stylized ligatures. You'll notice in this modern day typeface interpretation the two L's with the second one nested in the first one. This is very commonly seen throughout Art Deco. Layout design in Art Deco style features detailed boxes, line art, and double strokes. I found the perfect example while dining at a 1920s style restaurant in Asheville, North Carolina. The menu layout featured beautifully detailed line art as well as boxes that featured those double strokes or lines that cross over each other, creating an elegant feature. You can also see this double stroke or outline feature in the name of the restaurant that goes vertically down the left side. Gold, as you might have noticed, gets heavy use in this movement as part of showing success, wealth, and opulence of the era. Monograms and radio graphics, oh my! Another fantastic find was the Scout Guide, found in the lobby of my hotel. This triple monogram features a radial line effect that emulates the sun's rays. You will see sun rays echoed in lots of Art Deco designs, as well as other features from nature like plant leaves, shells, and other natural objects, a holdover from Art Nouveau. The next art and style movement we're going to talk about is probably the most influential one in modern graphic design. We all are taught this method when we go to design school or when we're starting to learn design. So this one is really, really important to pay attention to because it really established the basics for a lot of things we do today. The next one is Swiss International Design, also known as the International Typographic Style. Some people shorten it to just say Swiss Design. Grids, white space, and sans serif typefaces rule. This form follows function ethos of the Bauhaus movement can be clearly seen in the Swiss design style popularized in the 1950s by designers in Switzerland. It has heavily influenced modern day design and can be seen as a continued evolution of the Bauhaus movement with its super simple geometric shapes. Grids are the mainstay of Swiss style in that they help to logically maintain order but to also present information in an easily digestible way. This style stands out among other styles because of its general use of heavy white space between elements. This ensures the design maintains readability and has a simple direct goal. Typography plays a larger role and even starts to become the design itself. It features mostly sans serif typefaces void of any details or serifs. 
Typography is usually left aligned, with ragged right edges. This is also the style that birthed the typeface Helvetica, the most popular sans-serif typeface today, even used for the New York City subway and many other government institutions. Volkswagen applied Swiss design to its advertising to create wide open white space. Before this time, using too much white space was considered wasteful of the given space. Swiss design accentuates the white space, and it even becomes part of a design element on its own. The golden ratio was important to Swiss design in helping give structure to design. Any grid created with a structured math equation was now in the Swiss designer's tool belt. We can see a resurgence in grids being used in all facets of logo design, from overall layout to the construction of the logo mark as seen in these examples. Like the Bauhaus movement, there is a general focus on simple geometric shapes and simplification. Rarely does one design movement exist independently without being influenced by prior design movements. If you can make it more simple, then do it. The main mantra of Swiss design is the process of simplification. I think the biggest mistake designers make is being overly ambitious with visualizing an idea. Complexity can add some character to a logo or icon or design, but we also must ensure our concepts are as simple as they can be so they can be effective. Are there any unnecessary elements or details in your concept? Is there a way to combine graphics to have one single focal point instead of multiple things? As we studied earlier, Art Deco and other prior art movements depended on extra decorations or detail to wow a viewer. With Swiss design, we wow with simplicity and clarity. We want them to see our design as clean and simple and to the point. It is what you do with the extra space that matters. What makes this old physics textbook a classic Swiss design is not what it does with the design space, but what it does with the leftover space. Most modern designers struggle with making sure to use all of the design space given. Swiss design allows a designer to present less information at one time, bringing more focus to what is shown. It would be natural to make this physics graphic larger. In this case, it is made smaller, so that extra white space can allow the design to breathe. There is always tension when we lay out our designs. Make sure to use white space as an element of design and not just empty nothingness. What you do with the extra space matters just as much as the other design elements you show. This is some featured student work. This editorial project completed by a student of one of my courses uses typography and graphic elements that go vertical and center aligned to challenge the typical index page you normally see. The thin weight of the type helps to add an elegant, fragile feeling. The subject matter featured on the cover is stunning on its own, so they made sure to keep it free from distracting objects, patterns, and textures to create a very Swiss-style clean layout with lots of great space.